Hello everybody. In this video I'm featuring the first light on, on the Carbon Star 150 telescope as well as give you my thoughts on the newer Carbon Star 200 imaging Newtonian. I've had my 150 since April and I've been able to take some images in wide and narrow band. But first, uh, here's a little bit of my journey. Like most, I chose a refractor for my first deep sky telescope. Unlike most, I went with an inexpensive doublet. Even though there are more popular models out there with wider fields, I'd still recommend this telescope to a newcomer. The Astrotech ADED allowed me to get images that I could practice using PixInsight on. Also, it was a fraction of the cost of other telescopes that are out there. Yes, it has color issues with color, and I had to correct for the purple stars, but it took me a while to even notice those. By the time I did, it was an easy fix. However, if you get into narrow band imaging, the focus is only on that narrow band, so there's literal or no aberrations. Of course, smaller objects like galaxies were out of its reach, but that didn't stop me from trying. After two years of using my Astrotech telescope, I was looking for something bigger. Now, I do have a 9.25 SCT telescope, but due to the long focal length, it has proven difficult for me to use. I purchased my used 9.25 SCT with a plan to use it for lunar and planetary work, and that's where it should be. However, how can you at least, not, at least try to use it for deep sky? Unfortunately, it would prove a bit out of my reach. Plate solving using the ASA Air is just out of its spec, so it fails to find its way in the sky reliably. My attempt to attach an autofocuser didn't go well either. Focusing the SCT is a bit of a mystery to me since you can't tell where the mirror is inside the telescope. I decided the learning curve for me and the fun factor just didn't compare to the Astrotech telescope. The 80mm telescope was just simply fun to use, and it worked. I'm still amazed that the ASI Air will plate solve and center an object. Add the autofocuser and it focuses with every change or filter change or and change in temperature. But I did want something in between the 80mm telescope and the SCT. I'd seen reviews of the Carbon Star Telescope and, it, and seen it recommended even as your first telescope for imaging. My past is mostly with Newtonian, so I thought a 6 inch mirror would be a good jump from the 3 inch refractor. I also wanted to get more detail of what I was shooting. Sure enough, when I ordered it, it arrived, and it was it's pretty. I'll, I'll give it that. I like the extra features like the baffles and the stiff spider secondary mount. Finding the back's focus and attaching accessories like my autofocuser went with no issues. My mono camera is the ZWO 533mm, which is the camera aperture recommends. The first thing I noticed was how fast the telescope was. I compared my setups for the Carbon Star to the Astrotech and chat GPT and found it was two to four to five times faster than the refractor. That is a large difference. It would show itself in my lights polluted skies very quickly. I can easily do five minute exposures with my mount, but not so much anymore. Even in narrowband, the sensitivity of the F3.8 telescope overwhelms the sensor. With a luminance filter, I had to go from three minutes to 45 seconds. I'm still experimenting with exposure times though. Since I got the new telescope in the middle of galaxy season, I decided my first target would be M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. Even at an, at an hour each of red, green, and blue, I was getting what I would take in five hours each at the uh, slower telescope. An early issue was solved by taking flats. While my flat flames don't show any crazy dust donuts, there are gradients. I also found an issue when taking images using the red filter. A huge reflection would appear, as shown here. I decided this might be a reflection of the red spider veins caused by surrounding light. It only appears when using a red filter. So when I, get, when I can get a dew shield, I'm hoping it goes away because I can't control my neighbor's stray light. That said, I do like the rigid spider veins that Aperture provided. Another issue was the dust cap. The stock cover that, come, that comes off during the night. I had heard that others had this issue, but it was attributed to cold. I was thinking in my Vega seat, maybe it wouldn't affect me, but it popped off maybe on the second evening. The YouTuber Astronautna sells a 3D printed back cap that works fantastic. I'd recommend this as a first purchase. 
buy this way before you even consider the mirror mask. I've not even bothered to put mine on yet, so you might save yourself 40 bucks. I highly recommend Astronautna's videos in the back cap. The star shapes don't bother me enough to install the mask of as, as of yet. Uh, I have yet to take this to a telescope out at any dark site, site, so all my images are for my, from my backyard, less than 15 miles from the Las Vegas Strip. Narrow band imaging is recommended in far light polluted skies, but wide band imaging is still possible. So here's my first effort with M51. I didn't get as much dust as I got with the 80 millimeter telescope. Total integration with the 80 millimeter was 29 hours, 30 minutes, and 20, 20 hours alone just for luminance. With the Carbon Star 150, only nine hours and 14 minutes total integration time and with only 4 hours and 34 minutes of luminance. The shorter integration times have allowed me to choose other galaxies before the season ended. The Leo triplet with nearly 6 hours of integration. The M101, the pinwheel galaxy at literally 11 hours. And I was also able to get M13. And I can now tackle tougher targets like NGC 4725, only 8 hours of RGB and luminance filter. I was also able to get a good shot of the Black Eye Galaxy M64. But back to narrowband. It continues to impress with the Crescent Nebula and the North American Nebula as well as the Pelican Nebula. Now in my third month I've started going after some targets, moving on from galaxies. Overall, I'm really happy with the telescope, and it was my first imaging Newtonian. I think it would not be a first good imaging telescope. I'd still go with a smaller refractor. I'd recommend the AstroTech doublet series, but this te telescope is definitely fun to use and easy. Now, as for the Carbon Star 200 that pretty much just came out in North America, it's now available, so here, there's a choice, and that's going to be a tough one. I'm sure most will be drawn to the larger telescope, but size-wise, the 150 is easy to take outside. As for someone new to astrophotography, the 150 would be my recommendation, unless you have a couple years experience. In that case, you might be able to jump ahead to the 200. Here's a view with the M27 with all three telescopes. And the red is the 150, the yellow is the 200, and the lastly in the green is my 9.25 SCT. This is also with my ZWO 533mm camera. So I'm thinking that the 200 is a mid-step between what I have now and the SET. Are two carbon stars in my future? I sure hope so. But looking at the specifications between the two, the 150 and the 200, the 100, uh, I'm sorry, the 150 is 10 pounds empty and the 200 is almost 16. They're both F4 which is really fast. The 200 gathers 78% more light than this Carbon Star 150, and the resolution is also a little better. In my opinion, it would be enough to notice, similar to the jump that I had from the 80 millimeter to the 150 uh, millimeter uh, aperture. As far as relating my Carbon Star 150 experiences, I haven't had issues with the focuser really. Uh, I've had one issue of tightening the focuser down and having the autofocus kind of wander and when it wasn't tightened down. Um, I think that I'm going to chalk that up as just to something to check on a regular basis. I'm so used to having the refractor that doesn't need a whole lot of maintenance, but with a re reflector you got a little bit of maintenance and that you have to uh, you know, align the mirror and all that. Um, and I've done that. I do see some stars that uh, trail and get uh, a little bit of coma on the one side or one edge of the frame, uh, but it's easily correctable and post-processing, so it hasn't been a, something that I've really put a lot of effort into fixing. Uh, I've just tried to align it the best I can and kind of go from there. I'm sure uh, as I learn on this, I will uh, find more things and find more things to tweak. Uh, but until then, with that, I'm going to sign off and uh, just say may your new year curse of cloudy skies be short. Thanks. <laughs>